On more than one occasion, I have gotten into conversations with people lately, both in person and in the DMs on Instagram, who are stressed out and anxious about the stock market. Now, you know I wouldn't be making this video if I didn't feel this myself sometimes. It's very difficult to be a personal finance nerd and not get sucked into the black hole of stocks, options, and the like. It's like you're on YouTube and you look up a video about budgeting, and before you know it, you're being shown stuff about day trades, Cordano, and NFTs. It's unfortunate because these days, all our information comes to us via algorithm, and people are more likely to search how to get rich quick then how to build wealth slowly. I mean, what a boring channel that would be. Remember to subscribe. So here are just some words of wisdom if you wanna quit the stock market that will hopefully still set you up for success in the long term. Make sure you watch it all because I'll also ask you a fundamental question to see if you really should think about quitting. Like I said, if you wanna quit buying and selling stocks, I'm not going to stop you, but don't drop the index funds. Maybe with stocks you had gone down the road of trying to make dark horse picks and short-term gains that haven't panned out. But before you quit stocks, we need to gear down and become long term investors again. And that means simplifying our investments and thinking way into the long term. If we do that, we should be able to trim our holdings down to just a handful of assets, probably just one index fund. Why do I believe in index funds so much? Well, when Warren Buffett was asked to give one piece of advice on how people should invest, Buffett himself advised that you can't beat the overall market in the long term. He's actually challenged hedge fund managers before, betting they couldn't beat the S&P 500 over the span of 10 years, and guess what? They couldn't. And unlike index funds, investing in individual stocks will require you to research the businesses and check on their financials each quarter, even after you select the stock. To do stocks right is a lot more maintenance than a passive approach of dollar cost averaging into an index fund. Next, it would be a good idea to check your risk tolerance. In essence, your investment goals, before becoming a passive investor. Make sure the way you have your ETFs or portfolio set up are in tune with your goals and those timelines. If you're not confident in how to do this, you could look at a robo-advisor like Questwealth or Wealthsimple Invest. I know these are slightly higher fees, but those apps will remind you to update your risk profile every year and make the adjustments for you. If you're uncomfortable with that, you could also seek out a financial advisor. They will look at your entire financial situation and can make recommendations on what to invest in. They'll usually have some portfolios or funds that they like to use too. Now this is where the fees start to get a bit high for my liking, but this is a better alternative than just stuffing all your money into a savings account where you're going to actually lose out on growth and in fact lose money to inflation. While you're at it, it's also a good time to look at your emergency fund. Have some money in there for unexpected life events, house repairs, and that kind of thing. How much you put in will vary from person to person. Some make you shoot for a six month salary. I actually do six months worth of expenses, which is still quite conservative because we can really clamp down on our expenses if we had to. But there's a benefit that is not often talked about. It could save your investments in a crisis. Hear me out on this. In March 2020, the illness hits and the stock market goes down, but what didn't get a ton of coverage was Russia and Iran arguing over oil prices causing the price of oil to plummet. Now I work in the energy sector and have seen how low oil prices can affect jobs where I live. So on top of worrying about a pandemic with a baby on the way, I got very concerned about keeping my job. If I lost it, I'd have to cash out my investments to pay bills. I would have been selling at a loss. Our net worth dropped 172K at the time, but I had an emergency fund. I had about six months plus of money that could hold us over if we needed it. So that emergency fund isn't just a good idea for unexpected expenses. Should the market speed down when you need some emergency money, you don't have to sell your investments at a loss to get your money out. You'll be covered with your emergency fund. So you've reviewed your goals, assessed your timelines, simplified your approach with some index funds, set up your emergency fund. It's time to make sure you can fall asleep at night again. I know for me, the thing that always gets to me is the amount and frequency of stock information, the emails and notifications that a stock has moved 10% or trades above high volume. Go through your phone and delete those stock apps, Bloomberg and Yahoo Finance, all of them. Unsubscribe from daily emails from Wall Street. Maybe stay away from the TV or computer for a bit too, because you may be tempted to check the news for market info. While not completely out of the markets, you're now set up to invest passively, so you don't need to hear about these things daily. So go take a walk outside. When I've talked to people stressed out about the stock market, they often talk about the level of effort it takes to stay on top of all the different opportunities out there. Growth stocks and blue chip stocks, cryptocurrency, and even risky things like penny stocks and SPACs. But I found one question usually helps discern if the person should power through the learning curve or just put things on autopilot and be passive, and that is this question. Do you enjoy this? Do you like this stuff? Are you a person who is interested in how companies are run, interested in new technologies and how they will be adopted? Will you be reading business news articles regardless of if you're in the stock market or not? If so, then you may as well put all that research to use and you're most likely not putting all your money in one company anyway. Congrats, you're sort of a finance nerd like me. But if the news stories, group chats, and daily emails are stressed to you and you'd much rather be doing something else, this is where a serious look at passive investing and robo-advisors or even a financial planner might be your ticket out of this hell. Now, if you're still convinced you have to quit, 
I hope I've helped, but if you're thinking maybe you're just in a bit of a rut with some recent investments, check out this video here for things that I've found which cause folks to lose money in the stock market.